to the Off Menu podcast, taking the gnocchi of conversation, throwing it into the boiling water of the internet, and waiting for it to bubble up to the top to serve up a nice bowl of podcast gnocchi. That's Ed Gamble. My name is James A. Caster. We own a dream restaurant. And it, sorry, I had to swallow there. Great. That's what's there. Yep. And every week we invite in a guest and we ask for their favourite ever start a make us dessert, side dish, and drink. Not in that order. And this week our guest is. Paul Foot. Paul Foot, a wonderful comedian, one of my one of my favourite comedians, James. Yeah, uh, you know, I think it's fair to say that our entire generation of comics inspired by Paul Foot in yeah. some way, to some degree, absolutely hilarious, totally unique. Yeah, always to the beat of his own drum. To the beat of his own drum, not just on stage, off stage as well. Yeah, it's not an act. No, it's not an act. So very excited to speak to Paul Foot because I genuinely don't know what he's going to say. But I know he likes cooking and I know he enjoys food. I do know that. Before I even became a stand-up comedian, I'd watch Paul's YouTube channel. Yes. And every now and again, he would do a little cook-along. Yeah. Where he would show you how to cook a fish pie and stuff like that. Oh, brilliant. I, no, me- this... I remember the fish pie, especially. This is going to be so much fun. Uh, Paul has had an amazing career as a stand-up <laughs> comic uh, and and uh, we've got we've got a lot of questions for him. Also, you can see Paul's new tour, Dissolve. Get tickets at paulfoot.tv and see all the different places where he's coming. He'll be coming to a town near you, He I'm will, sure. I'm sure. Also, and we hate to do this, but every single week there is a secret ingredient. If the guest says it, they get kicked out on their ass because we've deemed it unacceptable. And this week, the secret ingredient is a moist, moist cake. cake. Moist cake. Now, this refers to one of Paul's signature stand-up comedy routines. Fantastic routine about how if you get given a slice of homemade cake, you have to comment on how moist it is to the the person who's made it. I once saw him do this routine uh, to a room full of people who were loving it, really laughing. There's one guy in the front who wasn't. And uh, Paul Paul said to him, like, you're not enjoying my, my comedy. And the man was like, nah, it's not for me. And then Paul offered him a slice of an invisible moist cake and said, would you come on, just bite this and join us all. And the man was like, no. And he was like, just have a bite of the moist cake. And it was a standoff for about five minutes. And eventually the man went and mimed <laughs> it, eating the moist cake and everyone cheered and went crazy for it. Fantastic. That's what that's the sort of thing you get at a Paul Foot show. Yeah. Paul did a lot of uh, mimes uh, for a while. He invented a new form of mime where he spoke during it, <laughs> yeah. um, which I have very very fond memories was of. Was that when he was being Penny? No, that I think that was post Penny. Yeah. The other routine of Paul's to look up is weirdly he did that show Last Comic Standing in the US and did very well on it. Yeah. Uh, and he did Moist Cake on that. I think and uh, Shy Horses is the other big routine mm. that you definitely need to look up. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, you can tell we're we're absolutely uh, giddy fans. So let's get Paul onto the podcast now. This is the Off Menu Menu of Paul Foot. Welcome, Paul, to the Dream Restaurant. Oh, thanks, Ed. Welcome, Paul, to the Dream Restaurant. We've been expecting you for some time. Oh, hi, James. <laughs> uh, that's funny, you appearing there like that. Yeah. And, oh, oh, hi. Oh, that was... That's funny. You just appeared out of nowhere. Yeah, I did, didn't I? No, you didn't appear out of nowhere. No, I've been here all the time. No, you came from behind a door. Yeah. You've been hiding behind a door. Yes. It was a bit weird when you appeared, a bit frightening. Yeah. In a horrible way. Yeah. In a, just a horrible sort of stalkery way. In a creepy way. Yeah, yeah. in a creepy yeah. way. Yeah, yeah. Because when you appeared, James, it was more magical. It was, well, it was magical. You just appeared out of nowhere. It was yeah. magical and, and lovely. And I'm sorry for what you had to endure with Ed beforehand. Yes, well, it wasn't just that appearing. Yeah. You know, it was a lot of things happening in the weeks and months preceding it. <laughs> you could... Different appearance. Ed has been making various appearances yeah. in my life. Yeah. yeah. In different places. Sometimes just appearing in old phone boxes. Yeah. I think I walked past a phone box. I think, um, I didn't even know I had phone boxes anymore. What do they use them for? Are they for the internet? What do they have them for? Yeah. And I see Ed Campbell's in there. And it's a local phone box near my house. There's yeah. no reason. Yeah. But, hey, no one uses them anymore. And, and what, why, what, why is he there? Yeah. yeah. What, was he do- what was he doing in the phone box? N- nothing. Just that's what was so weird about it. Yeah. You know, yeah. if it'd been something like, uh, I don't know, 
even if you'd had binoculars or something, yeah. like, a, like a proper sort of stalkery pervert. Like a grubby, yeah. like a grubby one. But at least yeah. that would have given a context. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, or even, even, you know, even something sexual. Yeah. Like, I'd have welcomed because it, I'd have known what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know yeah, what yeah. I'm up to. You know yeah. what it is. Yeah. You call the police, they know how to deal with it. It is a bona fide offence. Yeah. But you can't just call the police and say, I think I've seen Ed Gamble in an old phone box. <laughs> no. Not doing anything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's giving you nothing so it's not to a report. crime. I was no. just in the phone box. Yeah. Are you worried that um, when you hit the road and you go on tour doing your show Dissolve around the UK, that Ed is going to follow you around the UK and pop up at various places? Absolutely. In fact, what I tend to do when I get in my car is always check the back seat in case it's one of those things you've seen from a film yeah. when suddenly Ed yeah. Gamble comes from behind and just yes. says, Ugh. I was here all the time, hiding in your car. I want to speak to you. And I say, I can't speak to you, Ed. Yeah. That there are a number of restraining orders. Yes. That in the county courts, as well as in the jurisdiction of California, in in various countries, there yeah. are restrictions. Yeah. You can't, I can't speak to you. You know what happens. I call the police and it's, they, the police, I don't even have to say anything to the police. I've got a code number. I yeah. just say to them, Code four seven three nine. Yeah, right, well, and I know the code now. Thanks for letting me know the code, oh, Paul. No, oh, dear. The code. And also, oh, no. I've got all of your tour dates listed here, so I know exactly where you're going to be and when. Oh no, that's concerning, yeah. isn't it? That is a worry. All mm. I'm saying is it's uh, played into his hands this episode. Yeah, it's going to be uh, beginning of October. Is going to be great. Aberdeen, Edinburgh, Glasgow, Sheffield, Birmingham, Stafford. Oh, yes, got it's a good job that I went to the trouble of learning a false. N code number for the police, <laughs> as well as going to the extravagant expense of making a false website mm. that looks like my own website <laughs> yes, but has different TV. dates. <laughs> always one date day behind. Oh, so man. you always appear at the theatre yeah. one day after I was there where the police are waiting. <laughs> Do you worry that's going to damage your sales? Well, it will reduce them by one <laughs> <laughs> because then you'll be to. Yeah. yeah <laughs> you know, there'll be one less ticket. Oh, we're still with the ticket will be stolen, but there'll be one there'll be one empty seat in every show. Yeah. It'll yeah. always be there, the Ed Gamble seat. Uh, seat four uh, E. Four four rows back and and five in. Yeah. That's the one that's where my seat. that's your seat, which you've booked for every single show, <laughs> but that will always be empty. Yes. Yeah. But that's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. You look at that seat and feel comforted, I guess. Yeah. I, I know that that is the difference between me and death. Yeah. You know. Oh, that's becoming very apparent that that, that the, these, these are the stakes here. Yes. I've known you for some time that, yeah. that Ed, and by the way, I think it's best that in this podcast, Ed is referred to in the third person <laughs> yeah. at all times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. you know, I know that he has Gamble. been plotting against me. Do I yeah. need to refer to myself in the third person as well? Does that make you feel safer? Yeah, I think I think okay. that's better. It's like a, it's like an entity. Yes. Yeah. And then, yeah, I'm just an aura, really. Oh, sorry, Ed's just an aura. Yeah, Ed Gamble. Yes. Yeah, Ed, Ed Gamble. Ed Gamble, yeah. the spirit of Ed Gamble. Yeah. <laughs> which is not a good spirit. Not no. like yours, that genie, that lovely, Nothing. wonderful... Genie yeah. coming up, all like a, all like, like a fluttery little genie, yes. <laughs> rising. Uh, yeah. If I may say, with a dash of camp. Thank you. You know, lovely. You know? Yeah, yeah. I don't think there's any non-camp genies, though. To be fair, I think it comes with the territory. Well, that's right. Who thinks yeah. it? Who thinks it? Huh? Who thinks it? Who, who thinks it comes with the ter territory? Oh, Ed Gamble thinks it comes with the territory. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, I mean, if you look at genies, particularly in, in Panto, yeah. always camp, aren't they? Yeah, yes. yeah. I mean, there was one with Christopher Biggins. For months of work they did trying to get the campness out of him so he could play the, the, the most sort of straight, sort of macho genie ever, and it was just a waste of money. Yeah, Money yeah. down the drain that ultimately, ultimately meant that they didn't make a profit. Yeah. But there's solid profits to be made on Panto, because yeah. they're big sellers, but yeah. instead... It, uh, losses were made and the theatre had to close. Do you know, I mean, you know, I don't expect you will know, but do you happen to know some of the methods they use to try and um, decamp things? Well, yes. Well, some of the methods, yeah. Uh, sp speaking deep, speaking deep. Yeah. Speaking deep, begins deep, yeah. deep begins. Yeah. Uh, and then they'd, they'd get him to say things like, uh, uh, <laughs> things like that, and, uh, uh, yeah, 
I mean, I, some of the things I can't really say, but the sort of things you'd say in the 70s, like, yes. right, nice racking you love. <laughs> but so they'd find things, and, and as we ought to put a sort of um, a warning, a warning yeah. trigger yeah. warning, yeah. Yeah. that some 1970s phrases are going yeah. to be used yeah. in this podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was things like that. So po- uh, 1970s uh, phrases, you'd have to say stuff yeah. like, right, right, darling, want to meet up after the. Wanna meet up after work? Yeah, you got a boyfriend? Doesn't stop us, does it? Things like that. That's yeah. the sort of stuff. Yeah. That's the sort of stuff that Biggins has yeah. to say. Biggins has to say that to yeah. decap the genie parents. And uh, didn't really make much difference. Didn't work, so as soon as he got on stage. As soon as he got on stage, he was like, oh, hello, there's Christopher Biggins here. Here for, you know, you all know what you've come for. Mm. And I know what I've come for as well. Mm. <laughs> and all that, all that all that sort of stuff, all the innuendo, it would yeah. all be out, the innuendo, yeah. the campness, yeah. Yeah. and it was supposed to be you know, like the most masculine panther ever, that's what they were aiming for. Yes. Yeah, very sad, very, very sad. sad what happened. <laughs> and they wanted no innuendo in that panto, yeah, again, no. mistake, you know. Real shame, big, mistake. Big should, mistake. Shouldn't have hired Biggins. No, uh, shouldn't have had Biggins. But then he, but he, yeah, he puts bumps on seats. But then, you know, also another thing that puts bums on seats is the combination of an actor who used to be in Emmerdale 10 years ago, as well as other well-known actors like Wendy Craig. Yeah. You know, it, it all adds up. Yeah. Would, you you, know, would you do Panto Paul? Uh, no, uh, well, uh, in what, being serious? Are we being serious? <laughs> Are we being serious? Are we joking? Oh, it's up to you. Uh, well, uh, I mean, I... What well, are you? I mean, it's not... It's not uh, it's not a dream. It's not the dream, is no, it? Uh, you know? No, it's not the dream. But would you enjoy it? Do you think? Um, yeah, I mean, I would enjoy it because <laughs> because any you can enjoy anything, can't you? I mean, uh, you know, if I had to do fifteen years hard labour in Siberia, I'd you'd enjoy that. I'd enjoy it. <laughs> you think so? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you get in. Except my life is different now. I'm no longer a stand-up comedian. Yeah. I'm in Siberia, having gone to Russia and said something to whatever I did. Yeah, you did something. Yeah, yeah. I, um, yeah. I uh, said an innuendo to uh, Vladimir Putin in the yeah. style of Christopher Biggins. You did yeah. panto in Russia. I was doing panto in Russia. Yeah, yeah I was doing panto in uh, Leningrad. Yeah. And uh, no, it's not called Leningrad anymore, is it? I don't know. Why did that pop out of my mouth? <laughs> I think I was going back to the 70s. The 80s, yeah, yeah, 80s yeah. and 70s. Yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so that was a mistake. But anyway, the point is, uh, the point is, uh, yeah, get into it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So if, if you have to toil at the coal face of Panto, yeah. you must, you've must. got to enjoy it, haven't you? You've got to enjoy it. So yeah, you, you, you'd have a good time. Yeah, I'd you'd have a good time. Yeah. You'd accept that that's your life now. Yeah, I'd accept that it's my life, but I'd accept that there's more likely of a way back from a life sentence in a Russian kangaroo court sentencing me to life of hard labour in Siberia. There's more likelihood of getting back into my career from that yeah. than there is from appearing in Panto. Let's <laughs> <laughs> face it, right up there with being on a cruise ship with, you know, the death knell being sounded for once career. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair enough. We're going to talk a lot about food today. We already know that you are a foodie. You appreciate the fine foods. When I first met you over 15 years ago, uh, you were definitely in a phase at that point, and maybe it's not stopped, maybe you're still doing it, where you said to me, I only ever eat in Michelin star restaurants now. It was sort of, I mean, I don't know whether you've mis- remembered slightly, but... <laughs> that's, what, that's what you said? Yeah, well, perhaps I was trying to impress you. Yeah. <laughs> I think, well, there's a, tr- there's a truth to that, in that, that you get the good value, the best value, I think, in restaurants is at the top end and at the bottom end. Uh-huh. You can get some really cheap thing for £1.70, good value, yeah. and you can pay £200 for a really good meal, it's really good. Mm-hmm. Where you lose out is on the sort of mid-range, yeah. where it's just not particularly like the sort of Bella Italias, and the place is sort of a bit better than the Bella Italias. Yeah. It's nothing, you could cook it yourself, it's not that good. And it's money down the drain. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, therefore it is 
uh, one should eat in the Michelin star restaurants when one can. I would yeah. like to see you host a consumer affairs show where you judge whether the things are money down the drain or not. Because that is yeah. a catchphrase. It's money down the drain. Yeah, money down the drain. That would be yeah. my, the name of my show. Yeah. Yeah. Money down the drain. <laughs> and I would look at things that, that are down the drain, money, <laughs> money wise. And, and would, you, would, would it be like Antiques Roadshow where members of the public bring stuff to you and you decide if it's money down the drain or not? Or are you going to establishments and deciding if what they're selling is money down the drain? Yeah, I'd go to establishments and there's obvious things. But mm. I find it hilarious that people are caught out by things like this like i bought a fridge a few years ago yeah a fridge and it cost about 200 pounds yeah. which is what you have to pay for a really quite good fridge yeah i mean you can't really pay a lot of money for a really expensive well, fridge if american you want. ones if you want to do that yeah but yeah. you don't re- it doesn't really make much difference mm. it's a fridge yeah so 200 pounds for a fridge there's not much that could go wrong in the fridge mm-hmm. and it's under warranty for the first two years anyway. Mm. And then they try and sell you a thing. Would you like peace of mind? It's only £28.99 per year. And if anything happens to your fridge, it'll be replaced. But does anyone actually just look at that and think, what are the chances of the fridge breaking down? <laughs> Low. What are the chances that I'm going to end up paying a lot more? Like, it's ridiculous. Why do people do it? Madness. This oh. is the sort of thing I'd say in my podcast. What? what <laughs> not podcast. No, it's not a podcast, is it? It's a TV, TV show. show. TV show. No, so, I got confused. This is a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> this is really happening. I forgot that. This, this is, is real. Yeah, this is real. Yeah. This, <laughs> this is real. <laughs> TV show imaginary. Yeah. Yes. 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 And if someone did pay £28 a year, just in case something ha- happens with their fridge and goes wrong with it, uh, what, what would that be? Well, in it, in the show, they sign a thing that if they've been found to be putting money down the drain, <laughs> then I'll save some of that money. Yeah. So I'll save 50% of the money that they're putting down the drain will be saved, and the other 50% goes to me. <laughs> So I would be siphoning yeah. from people's bank accounts money. Yeah, yeah. People who have made stupid decisions in the past. Yeah. Any bad decision, I get half the money. So in a way, going on the show is also money down the drain. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's a massive, you know. I, I might say to you, you've got an investment, and you could say, oh, it's quite a good investment, I'm getting 7% interest. And if I found one with a higher interest, I'd say, you should have thought about that. Higher interest. So yeah. you then get the higher interest, but you pay half the difference to me, you see? <laughs> yeah. For life. <laughs> when you get their money down the drain, when, when, when that gets siphoned to you, yeah. do you ever pay tax on that? Or is that tax-free? Uh, tax-free. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Because, um, well, it is, isn't it? Because, yeah. Because it's not earnings, is it? It's just uh, money I'm siphoning it's off. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a gift. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my accountant, I said, you know, how does it work with the tax situation with certain things? Yeah. Uh, uh, earnings is and tax this rate, and blah, 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 and dividends tax this rate. Siphoning. <laughs> <laughs> Does, has anyone ever paid tax on siphoning? No, 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 no never. Like, it's, like another thing you can do with siphoning is you can siphon money out. <laughs> like you yeah. might have too much money, there's a bit of a problem, got too much money here, it's causing a problem uh, because there's the, the um, um, capital gains tax situation, big worry, siphon it out into yeah. the Cayman Islands. Yeah, so yeah. So siphoned off, si- that's, that's siphoned off. It's siphoned off. Yeah, that's siphoned, yeah. Not siphoned out. Yeah, siphoned yeah. out is when it comes out of their bank account yeah. into me. Sure. Yeah, and yeah. then that was then ironically siphoned off yeah. Yeah. into other accounts around the world. And then that gets siphoned up? Yeah, that gets uh, siphoned up into property portfolio. Right, yeah. Yes. Because I, I would like to be wealthy enough that I don't have a house or even second home or even three homes, a portfolio. Yeah. That's what I want to have, a portfolio. Yeah. So you don't even really know what's in it. Yeah. You've got a portfolio. Oh, well, I'm going to Hong Kong next week. Oh, should I stay in a hotel? I think I might have somewhere in Hong Kong. Let me check my portfolio. <laughs> yes, I've got somewhere in Hong Kong. I could stay yeah. there. Although the portfolio says someone's in there at the moment. Could be a well, I'll stay in a hotel. Never mind. You know. <laughs> so so you, always, you always end up in a hotel anyway. You always stay in a hotel. Yeah. But then <laughs> in I'm your like, fantasy. Yeah, in the fantasy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but then I might think, oh, well... Uh, you know, I need to expand the portfolio in certain yeah. areas, certain markets. Mm. Would you ever like like your property portfolio to include hotels? Because then, then you've got yourself covered there if you buy a hotel and you own hotels. Mm. Yeah, I'd like to own a hotel. And then yeah. you've got a room whenever you want. And you've got a really... I mean, I stayed in a hotel in Melbourne earlier in the year 
It wasn't my hotel. No. <laughs> yeah, I, should, I want to point out before I start yeah. the story. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. It wasn't mine, but I knew someone who knew the owner of the hotel. Best room in the, in the hotel, wasn't it? All people at reception saying, if there's anything you want, anything at all, just let us know. Yeah. I mean, that's just, imagine if that was my hotel. Yeah. I think they do say that to everyone, though, in hotels, right? Oh, do and they? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but, uh, I don't know, I've never stayed in a hotel. <laughs> I don't stay in hotels often because I'm normally just in my one of my portfolios. portfolios yeah. so I, I don't, I'm not familiar with it. I didn't know that. I thought it was some special treatment I was getting. <laughs> That's disappointing. <laughs> I didn't know they said that to everyone. Yeah, they aren't going to help anyone yeah. up. Um, uh, but was, was it the Adina in Melbourne? It was not the Adina. It no. was the... Um, I forgot what it was. Like. The mantra. The mantra. The mantra. I was there too. The mantra on Russell. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah I was, was, did they offer to help you or did they just tell you, oh, fuck yourself? Yeah, they, they said, sorry. Are you poor foot? I said, no. I said, no, I can't get you anything. I mean, I'm surprised that you were able to stay in the same hotel as Paul since you your history with him. What do you mean? <laughs> Stalked him all the time. You followed him around well, the country in phone boxes. He didn't know I was there. Coinc- and you followed him to Melbourne now. Yeah, you stayed yeah. in the same it hotel. It was the same hotel. You made a big mistake. You wasted your money. <laughs> it was an epping. Yeah, a uh, different one. Yeah, a different one yeah. near the airport. Yeah, I wonder why I can not see you. That's the greatest trick ever. Yeah. <laughs> we always start with still a spark from water, Paul. Oh, yes. Well, I think still water, and there's a reason for that, which just sounds ridiculous. Mm. But I I am in good health. Congratulations. But I have one weird thing about me, which is not really a health thing. And I only really realised eight months ago. But I used to, if I had like sparkling water, anything sparkling, like sparkling cherry cola and things like that, then I would go all all bloated inside. Mm. And then if I had like all rich food, I would have to go to the like the loo and it would have to release it in a really violent way that sounded like I was... (laughs) being sick. Yeah. One time I was at the Dorchester Hotel having one of those Michelin star meals yeah. that we talked about. Yeah. And, then I, and then I said, oh, oh, show me around the Lewis, please. It's all very polite. Yeah. Who's this very please? Thank you so much, sir. And all that <laughs> stuff. And then I went in and there was like some really rich people in the Lewis. Yeah. It's the Dorchester. And I just went, <laughs> or, like, or like a vomiting sound. But it's like yeah. a vomit sound. Yeah. But it isn't. Yeah. But it's like all the gas coming out all violently. Wow. Anyway, oh, and I couldn't work up what it was and I thought it was because I'm swallowing air as I'm eating eating too quickly and kind of air's going in. But anyway, then suddenly I was having a conversation with a friend a few months ago and he said something about, um, oh, I just did a little burp there. Mm. And then I said, what is burp? What? <laughs> I just said, I said, what is burp? Because I didn't really know what burp was. <laughs> I didn't know. I'd heard the word, but I didn't know what burp was, you see. And then I discovered that um, you can burp either loudly, like little whoop burp, or silently. Yeah. But the point is, I realised that never in my whole life have I ever burped, ever. I've never burped. I didn't know what it was. So, uh, I've been training myself in burping because I looked it up online and it's quite rare what I've got. Yeah. It's quite rare, but you can have it done by... Um, under general anaesthetic, you have to have Botox injected into your sort of like down in the mouth, in your down, throat, down in the throat. That bit, yeah, yeah, to help you burp, to help you because it opens it up and then you can burp after that. But I was trying to do training because I saw an internet video of a man trying to do a burp, and one time after brushing my teeth, I managed to get my mouth all full of little toothpaste, and I managed to do a belch. And I have been able to, more recently, do like, release all the gas in like the vomity way, but less loudly yes. than before. Like, I'd be on aeroplanes, and like the cabin crew would say, are oh, you all right? What's going on? Yes. But, but anyway... So you could, so the problem is that you're getting all that gas in there, the but gas you'd have no way of releasing it other than this weird vomit sound. I can't release it other yeah. than the weird vomit sound. Yeah. Mm. But then... Strangely enough, two weeks ago, and I hadn't even eaten or anything, mm. I've been doing all this training, you see, and then I was just changing a record in my record player, and suddenly I did a burp, and that's the first one in my whole life. But I haven't done one since, that was about three weeks ago. Wow. But there's a maybe a hope that yeah. I, yeah. And the next step would be another burp, and the next step of that would be a silent burp, which is like, that's like a real pipe dream to me. <laughs> At the moment, like, I'm more likely to be in Panto with Christopher Big 
in the sun. Sure. Not, not that I want to. No, you don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. It's <laughs> unlikely, but it's still. So yeah. anyway, so um, so that's 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 why for that reason I'd have this still water. Yeah. So the last thing I need is more more bubbles inside me because of that thing. It's got a fancy name for it. Really not being able to burp. Yes, and, and you can have it done, but you have to have it done privately. Mm -hmm. And it costs about £4,000 or something. But it's, what concerns me is that, you know, you've got to find, it's privately, and you've got to find someone who knows what they're doing. Yeah. It's not like yeah. the NHS when, with the NHS, you can have something done on the NHS for free, and if it goes wrong, you can then just live with it for the rest of your life. <laughs> but tear it on and just say, you know, you know the NHS, they let me down. There's been so many cuts, so many cuts in the NHS. It's a disgrace. It's been running to the ground. Uh, I went through a routine operation on my hip. I've been in agony ever since. I had a routine operation to check something to do with my gallbladder. I've been, uh, I've been incontinent ever since and I can't have sex anymore. It's a disgrace. That's, uh, that's what's happened in the NHS. And after it, uh, they pay me just £15,000 compensation. It's not much, is it? Considering I've lost my sex drive. I've lost my, I've lost my sex drive. I've lost my, I've lost my ability to you know all that stuff yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you know if it's private you know you've got you can't do that no, no so it's best to make sure they know what they're doing yeah yeah so that's why i thought why don't i just train myself to do it it must be possible i mean if you've done it when you were changing the record or your record player that's a good start yeah maybe you remember what the album was you were listening to the music maybe that helps maybe it relaxed you vivaldi was it Certainly not. No, it was uh, J.S. Bach. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't have been listening to Vivaldi. Oh. <laughs> Talk about second rate. <laughs> <laughs> Can't believe you just said that. That's like the most insulting thing you can say. The yeah, idea was going to listen to Vivaldi <laughs> in my own home. <laughs> Like in my private sanctuary, when I finally got into my own home, done a complete sweep of the whole house, check that Ed Gamble isn't there in anywhere in the home, and I can just relax. The idea I'm going to put Vivaldi on and then burp, well, it's, it's insulting. It's not that apology. Yeah, I can't apologize. Says that. That's, I apologize. That. That's all right, James. I do apologize. I know you didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. And deep down, I like you. <laughs> yeah. Poppadoms or bread? Poppadoms or bread, Pulfer? Poppadoms or bread? Oh, poppadoms or bread? Mm. Poppadoms? Oh, lovely. Yeah, they're nice, aren't they? They are nice. They're very nice. I mean, it doesn't, it's not going to fit in with my meal, I don't think, because yeah. it's not a, I don't think I'm going to have an Indian meal particularly, but it's nice, isn't it? Yeah, It's yeah. the best, isn't it, poppadoms? Yeah. Yeah, with all the, all the, the little, little pickles. Yeah. The little pickles, and there's always one that no one likes. The yeah. onion. Yeah, people often disregard the onion. The chopped onion bit. I I like the chopped onion one. Well, that's yeah. because you can't burp, so you never have to experience the onion burp. Oh, no, I've never had that. They don't repeat onion. Oh, do they? Oh, I didn't know. Yeah, you see, you have to taste it again as it belches out. Because your when mouth. you burp, which is what you're training yourself to do, if you've had onion, you then get the taste of onion in, in the burp. Ah, oh, but when I do the little vomi thing, yes. you definitely have to taste that. <laughs> it's real bad. <laughs> I mean that is not. It's, that's like concentrated onion. Yeah. It's yeah. like it's like a thousand French onion soups. So forget about your little onion burp thing. This is like concentrated onion trauma. Yeah. This is like 25 years in Siberia. Hard onion. You know, it's just cutting onions for 25 years. Yeah. And then you uh, have it all with that belch. You know how you say you can enjoy anything. Does that go for the weird vomit sound? Yeah, one has to enjoy every part of one's life, doesn't one? Yeah. If one can, you know, it's all part of life. Yeah, it's all part of life. It's all part, yeah, so I, I, I make the best of it. Yeah. That's one of, my, one of the big things that's going to happen yeah. in my life. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, if you think about it, I may be on the way to being cured, but even if there's, say, another 50 vomit moments in my life before the curing and I've learned how to do the burping, that's still 50... I mean, that's about as long as this podcast. Yeah. So, you know, I, I might as well enjoy it. Yeah. Because that's the, the whole length of this podcast is just vomiting. <laughs> Which, in many ways, yeah. you know, is probably the reaction of some guests, I suppose. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's been said before. A few of them. You know, sort of think. doubled up. Yeah. But sort of thinking, what did I do that podcast for? No. But then vomiting repeatedly thinking about the podcast but yeah. also checking the time to yeah. make sure that the vomiting 
some way, I don't know why it makes a difference, but that it outlasts the length of the podcast. Yeah, yeah. If, if the vomiting's longer than the podcast, then you think, yeah, okay, that's that's gone now. Somehow, <laughs> yeah, somehow yeah. in some sort of spiritual way, it's just exorcised. Cancels it out. Cancels yeah. it out. Yeah. So, you, so do you want all the dips of your pop up? Oh, yes, please. You want all of them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that one, the mango-y one, I like the sweet one. Yeah, and the one that's... Uh, Sort of the, the very hot one. Yeah. Yeah, on that one. The, the, the lime pickle. The lime pickle. And, the, the, and there's a fourth one that I can't remember what it is now. It's like the writer, the, 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 yeah, the yogurt. Oh, the yogurt one. Yogurt-y one. Yeah, yeah, a bit of the yogurt yeah. one. Do you want to invent a dip as well? Invent your own pop it on dip and a brand new one, a Paul Foot special? Yeah. Yeah. I really like cherry cola. Yeah. No, I mean, I say that. I don't know why I say that because. I only probably have it maybe every four years, but like every four years I have like a, a craving, it's overwhelming, it can come on quite quickly, Yeah. Uh, it can come on within 15 minutes and I've gone from just normal life to just massive craving yeah. for cherry cola, yeah. it happens about every four years to the extent that I'll go into shops and just be like, have you got cherry cola, you know, yeah. Yeah. and then I have a bit of cherry cola and it's just, and the craving's gone yeah. for, for four years, That's nice. so yeah, I'd have that flavour. Yeah, dip, a cherry cola dip. A cherry cola on my poppadoms. So do you want actual, just like a little saucer of cherry cola, or do you want a sauce like a, that has a consistency of like mayonnaise, but that is cherry cola flavour? Yeah, I think I want to do something a bit more Heston Blumenthal. Yes, I want to, yeah. something that tastes of cherry cola, yeah. but looks quite different. Yeah. I would like the, the sauce to look like crushed up bits of old poppadom. Right. It looks like bits of old poppadom. Okay. But it's actually much softer. Mm. It looks hard, but it isn't. It's soft, yeah. and it's got cherry cola like flavour. Yeah. yeah, that's going to blow people's minds. Yeah, that will actually. And it's got vitamins in as well, oh. so, so you don't have to bother eating the rest of the day because it's got all the vitamins that you'd need for a day. For yeah. A day, yeah. yeah, the whole day's vitamins. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> all of that, yeah. and it's got protein and everything mm. that you need. It's a complete I, meal, really. Do you know? I only discovered it recently. That's another. You know, I don't know whether. You've had the same thing, like the view, but when there's things that you just, you get to quite an age, like I'm nearly 50, and then there's things you just didn't know, like I didn't know what was burp, yeah. for example, and then there's other things, like, it was only when I was about 48 that I found out what a canyon was, I didn't know what a canyon was, I had no, no idea, and then people say, I've gone to the Grand Canyon, and I didn't really, I just sort of, just sort of, say, oh, that's nice, must be lovely to see it, and then change the subject, because <laughs> I didn't know what a canyon was, I didn't know what that word was. You didn't know what the Grand Canyon was, your whole, until you were 48? No, I'd heard of it, I knew it was near Las Vegas, okay. yeah. but I didn't know what it was, I didn't know what a canyon was. You'd never seen a photo of it? No, I didn't know what the word meant, and I'd never looked it up. I don't know why, I just never looked it up. I always thought I must look it up. Yeah. Like someone would say something about a canyon, I just must look that up. So I don't appear foolish next time. Yeah. But then I would just forget about it and then I'd suddenly be like a nightmare into a conversation with someone. Oh, we've just got a bird from a family holiday. Oh, we, we went in a helicopter, flew over the Grand Canyon. I think, oh no, it's happening again. <laughs> and I think, I'm 47 years old. I, I, yeah. I can't tell them I don't know what a canyon is. Yeah, I guess canyons aren't coming up that often though, right? So it's, you think, oh, I should look that up. And then it's so long until someone brings up canyons again. There was no point. Yeah, it's, it's about every four, four or five months on average. Yeah. The, the, yeah. An average. <laughs> That you meet someone who's either going to or coming back from the Grand Canyon, yeah. or just brings it up. Yeah, uh, an average, healthy, sexually active <laughs> adult. Yeah, the sexually active wasn't really relevant, <laughs> but that you know, every four or five months you'll hear the word canyon. Yeah, yeah. it'll be, and probably less often than that maybe once every ten months be involved in a conversation about a canyon yeah. where you really have to then sort of add something to the conversation so yeah. yeah I really know what you mean there yeah that, yeah Grand Canyon yeah 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 I get your meaning there I know what to say about that yeah yeah actually that this what I'm doing now that's actually some of the training that Christopher Biggins had to do <laughs> yeah 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 I know about canyons that was yeah, some of his training he yeah. used to do that yeah, yeah I know that. about canyons yeah tell me about it yeah. I, I think, Paul, if I didn't know about something and someone brought it up and I wanted to disguise the fact I didn't know about it, I wouldn't use the phrase of, I get your meaning there. Because oh. that is opening up 
a whole world of issues. <laughs> Someone said to me, yeah, yeah, canyons, I know all about that. Yeah. I mean, I, I, that's what I'd be suspicious. Yeah. Yeah, you would be, uh, yeah. You still haven't told us what a canyon is, though, during all of this. You're well, saying that I, you know what it is now. I think I know what it is. It's like a big kind of valley. Mm, yeah. Yeah, but I didn't know that. No. I had no idea what it was. I had no, I did not know that the Grand Canyon went down into the ground. I didn't know what it was. What did you imagine when people didn't say it? Was it just a blank slate in your mind? Or just did you a, imagine something? I half thought maybe it's some sort of mountain. But then that didn't seem to make sense because people said we flew over it. And you thought, well, why would you fly up over a mountain? Yeah. So then I thought maybe it's just some sort of thing with like a, like a big lake and there's like trees around it or something. It's kind of pretty. Yeah. Maybe it kind of reflects sunlight in a particular way. And people say, wow, what a canyon. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the light, the way it's reflecting off that lake. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, it's, a, it's a particular type of lake that reflects the light in a particular sort of way. Yeah. It's called a canyon. Yeah. It's kind of what I thought it was. A, 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 a lake that reflects light in a certain type of way. Yeah, yeah like that was yeah. some sort of docking site. I didn't know, something like that. I didn't really know, you know, yeah. I was guessing. Is there anything nowadays that you're pretending to know about or that you don't know about that you want to share on the Because we can, yeah, we can talk about it now. Yeah, I think there was. I think I brought this up because I was going to say something that I didn't know. Oh, yeah. With reference to what we were talking about on the podcast, but I've completely lost my thread now of what it was we were saying. <laughs> We've got a pop it up to the source that you've got. Yeah, uh, and you were saying something about, did I want the cherry cola... F- I can't remember what it was. Did you, want it dish, or did you want, want the sauce to just taste of cherry cola to be like mayonnaise that was... Do you not know what yeah. mayonnaise is? Is that what this is? Yeah, I thing? knew what mayonnaise was. There was something else I didn't know, something obvious. So, oh, I'll tell you what it was. It was... Uh, I said about vitamins and you said about protein. Wait, I think you said protein. Oh, I said protein. Yeah. But that was something I only discovered like a year ago. Yeah. I didn't know that protein is like food. Like you can eat... Uh, what, like I thought... I thought that food was only carbohydrate. Carbohydrates is what gave you, gives you energy. Mm. So you need carbohydrates like potatoes and things. It gives you energy. And I thought protein, like eggs or what else, is milk and things like that. Chicken. I thought that no, chicken, it doesn't give you energy. It's just I thought if you eat chicken or eggs and stuff, you'll have no energy mm. because it does, you can't get energy out of it. It's just like helps your bones. You need it for your bones because otherwise your bones will just break. Yeah. But I didn't know that it's energy. Yeah. I had no idea that you could eat protein and it gives beats that is food that gives yeah. you energy. Yeah, yeah. I think okay. that one is more because you're getting into the weeds sort of scientifically there. I think that's more understandable and acceptable than not knowing what a canyon is until you're 48. You, you, you think that's yeah, I think the protein thing's oh, yeah. fine. I think that's all right. But that's why I said the canyon thing first sort of softened up. <laughs> yeah, it's worked. So that when I said it, you, you weren't so shocked about yeah. the fact I, I knew that if I'd gone straight in with protein, yeah. you'd have been all over that yeah. head going on about it. <laughs> I know what you're like when you're getting your high horse. Yeah. And you'd have been going, well, how could you not know? Yeah. It's one of the foods. You know, you'd have been told the foods. Yeah. yeah, I would have been. Yeah. 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 But by sort of tricking you with a canyon thing, which kind of ro- wrong footed you. Yeah. And then pretending that I'd forgotten what I was saying earlier. I, I tricked you. It you tricked Ted you. Gamble. I tricked Ted Gamble. <laughs> Not for the first time. Always having to be on the move. Always uh, making phone calls to hotels. But, but actually it's another hotel. You think mm. you know which hotel I'm going to, but it isn't that one. So you do it. Yeah. Fake property portfolios left around on the desk. Yeah. You look in there and think, oh, I go there, it's one of Paul's, one of his portfolio. It's not. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a fake, it's fake information. Your dream starter, Paul Foot. Yes. Oh, yes. Uh, yes, a uh, dream starter. I thought uh, soup. Because I just think soup is so nice, isn't it? Because you get the flavour of what the soup is, but without having to actually eat whatever the thing is. Yeah, yeah. You just get the flavour. Yeah, yeah. And it's so easy, just spoon it in, there's no eating involved, there's no chewing. Flavour, in it goes, flavour, flavour, flavour. Yeah, do you not like chewing? Well, I mean, I don't mind it. No, it's all right, but it's just, uh, if I'm going to have this dream meal, why not make parts of it easier for me? Yeah, just, absolutely. Just, just shove it in. Yeah, makes sense. So I want soup. What flavour soup? Well, again, I I thought of mushrooms, because I love mushrooms, it's my favourite. But then, or pea, I love, love a bit of pea. But then I thought, what about quail? Because I like quail, but it's a bit fiddly to eat, isn't it? Mm. I love, there's quite a lot of f- flavour of quail. Mm. It's fiddle, 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 fiddling around with that quail, you know? Yeah. And then I thought, what about quail and champagne? Because then I wouldn't even have to bother. I could have champagne with it, but wouldn't have to even bother with having a glass.
glass of champagne. Yeah. It would all be there. It would all be in the soup. In the soup. So you want quail in champagne soup? Yes. <laughs> Lovely. Because I also think, like, you know when you're having a meal and then they say, oh, this wine goes to the food. Mm. I never quite know when, like, they say you should take a mouthful of the food and then have a bit of the wine, yes, it goes with it. But, mm. like, do you have to, like, if you get some of the food in your mouth, do you have to then get the wine in as well, all together, and then sort of chew it to get all the flavours together? Or can you have the food and swallow that and then get the wine in? Yeah. It has to be quite really fresh in. You still got the fla- you got a bit of the flavour of the chicken and the uh, pesto sauce. And get the wine in, get the wine in, because it pairs well. And then this particular wine uh, goes very well with the pesto. The, the notes of grapefruit really complement the pesto. So you, you still got the pesto flavour, get the wine in. Yeah. You know, yeah. Or, or what? You know, it's like, are you allowed to just sometimes have a mouthful of food and not have the wine? Yeah. yeah. Are you allowed to just have a mouthful of the wine? It's difficult to know. Yeah. And I just think, wouldn't it be easier if they just get the food and the wine and just blend it together? Yeah. Because they go together, and that's where I had the idea, to just shove it all together in a soup. Yeah. Quite a little champagne <laughs> soup. Yeah. Is the champagne still fizzy when it's in the soup? Well, I hope so. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like it to be. Good to retain the fizz. Yes, in fact, well, why not make it into a, an aspic? Make it into a, like a jelly, a jelly soup. Mm. And then you could have the bubbles in, couldn't you? Aren't, aren't you rolling the dice a little bit if you have anything fizzy that's got uh, bubbles in it? Oh, yes, you're right, yes. Because uh, you might have to do them with the... Yeah, no, I don't, yes, until I've done the training, you're right. So yeah. In that, for that case, I'll have the champagne flattened prior to... <laughs> I want the flavour of quail and flat champagne. Yeah, yeah. quail and flat champagne. In an aspic still? In an aspic. Yeah. So is it all jelly all the way through? It's jelly, yeah. So jelly soup. It's a jelly soup. So it's jelly. It's a soup that's been jelly. Yeah, it's jelly. Jelly, yeah, jelly. Yeah. It's a savoury jelly. Yeah. And you're just going to slurp that and not chew it because you don't want to chew it. So like, yeah, I don't, you don't have to chew jelly. You, do no. that, you can swallow it jelly whole. Yeah. But it doesn't matter because it just dissolves inside the tummy, doesn't it? Yes. So yeah. it's the only thing you can. But the only, apart from mashed potato, you can have mashed potato. You just swallow it down. Yeah. I can't think of anything else you can just swallow down without chewing it that's solid. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good question. Um, I guess like any I pure, like purees. Any pure, yeah. any puree yeah. or any jelly. Yeah. Yeah. Or aspic. Yeah. Or aspic. I like the word aspic. Yeah. It sounds good, sophisticated, doesn't it? doesn't it? Yeah. There's I think it sounds like cleaning products. Uh, you're thinking of asbestos. And Harpic. Yeah, and Harpic, yeah. Mm. Which together make an awesome combination. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of asbestos from a from a condemned building, the bit of Harpic, put it round your, yeah. round your loo, and you're not going to be worrying about uh, toilet stains in the in the toilet bowl for long, because you'll be dead from <laughs> asbestos. Stice, 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 you know, that thing you get from asbestos, you'll be dead. Yeah. Quite soon. That's literally money down the drain, isn't it? If yeah. You, if you do that to yourself. Well, if it's well, it depends how much it costs. Yeah. You say literally money down the drain, but how much does it cost to get asbestos? You get it from people will pay you to take it away. Yeah. <laughs> to be honest. So it's actually the opposite of money down the drain. Yeah. You're it's right. actually a good investment. It's actually your life down the drain. <laughs> yeah. And money for your children or other beneficiaries to your will. Make sure you make a will before doing that cleaning. Yeah. Yes. Because you will be dead shortly. <laughs> you'll be dead. You will be dead. <laughs> you, you'll be dead. The Virgin Atlantic Sail. It's a big deal. Wherever you want to go in the world. The Virgin Atlantic Sail. What's that set us up for? What's your dream main course? I thought fillet steak. I love fillet steak. Mm-hmm. And I don't like the other steaks. You know when people say, oh, I prefer, oh, I prefer sirloin. A little bit of the fat in it gives it the flavour. Oh, have you tried to remember? Oh, I know you say you don't like T-bone, but try this, it's exceptional. It's not exceptional, they're just awful. It's all gristle, aren't they? Uh-huh. You can't, it's all gristle, all those other ones, rump and all those ones, terrible. I disagree with you, Paul, but that little character you did there was like an impression of me. It, yeah, it, that's yeah. what you like. You yeah. like the oh, it's like, going marbling. Like like We've got the marbling. Yeah. It gives it the flavour. It all dissolves away when you kick it. It doesn't dissolve away when you. But it's all chewy. Like when I was a child, I used to hate meat because yeah. it was always 
uh, I'd sit there at the table and it was all going round around my mouth and it was all chewy and I couldn't get rid of it. Then I'd have to go to the toilet and like flush it down when no one was looking. Yeah. It was, just, the, it was just awful. Where would you keep it in between? Would you have it in your mouth when you went to the toilet and then spit it out? Yeah, I had it in my mouth and yeah. I'd have to stop making excuses. Oh, well, just put, you know, but they knew. <laughs> it was all in my cheeks, all that gristle, gristle. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and also, you know, when I say gristle, I do mean fat. I do always just call anything that isn't pure lean meat gristle. Yeah. I've always done that. Yeah, why? why? I don't know, just because it's just awful, isn't it? You know, like, yeah. um, when I go to my local butcher, sometimes I get, like, a chicken breast, and then I say, there's gristle, there's not really gristle, it's just a bit of fat on it. And then sometimes, like, well, another, but another butcher has to come over, because they say, yeah, it's all right, we know what to do with Paul. But they know they have to get rid of every single tiny bit of fat off it. Yeah. It's just awful. You hate it. Hate it. The only time I don't hate it is I only had it the other day. I hadn't tried it before, but I had Wagyu beef. Mm. And I don't think that was fillet, but uh-huh. it was all. It was quite fatty. There's a lot of marbling in that. A lot of marbling, yeah. but it was like proper marbling, not like from your, your cheap old Aldi... Sirloin steak thing that you eat and pretend that you're satisfied with. This was like proper wagyu. It's all like being massaged. They've massaged mm. a lovely yeah. little cow yeah. and everything. And it's just, it was like chopping into a beef burger. It was so soft. Yeah. And it was just pure meat with the fat all marbled through it. That was nice. Yeah. But even better, wagyu fillet steak. And then not only do you have the tenderness of the wagyu. No gristle at all. So you would like a Wagyu fillet steak? Yeah, a Wagyu fillet That'd steak. That'd be your dream. Yeah. You might be the first person. Have we had Wagyu before? Maybe. We've, sort of, we've chatted about it before. We've chatted about it. But I don't know if anyone's picked it specifically. Chosen. How do you like that cooked, Paul? To what temperature? Uh, uh, quite quite rare. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah, rare. What do you think of people who have, like, well done? Oh, it's appalling, isn't it? Mm, yes. I mean, obviously, I don't, I don't want to sit here and tell people how to live their lives. Yeah. But, you know, what sort of person would, uh, oh, I like it well done. You know, it's pathetic, isn't it? Can I have it medium well done? Like, what, what, they're the even worse people. Medium too well done. I mean, just just admit what you want. Yeah. You want it well done. Just say that. Don't try and sound sophisticated by saying medium well done. <laughs> just say, just say, I'm a, I don't appreciate the meat. I want it cooked to a sin. I want it cooked to a cinder till it's all gone all dry because I'm British and it's the only way I've ever had it. Yeah. I can't possibly like the idea of any blood coming out, out and just say, well done, have it like that. Yeah, well said. Yeah. Yeah. Well if said. I, I, I like to go to, you, if you go to a restaurant, especially British ones, they always cook it a bit more. Like if you say medium rare, they'll always do it medium and so yeah. on because mm. they're just too sort of scared to yeah. serve anything with any blood. So I like to say, could I have it really, really, well done until it's actually dried out and ruined because that's how you're going to do it anyway wasn't it <laughs> yeah that's what i like to say that shows i imagine the answer's no to this but do you want any sauce on the sometimes people like a sauce on their steak yeah peppercorn I, sauce or something. yeah i like a sauce well, you do well this is similar to the soup really isn't it because i can have any flavor i want yes yeah you know so i could have peppercorn yeah but i could have anything mm. Uh-huh. Cherry cola. Yeah, cherry cola. <laughs> yeah, cherry again. cola sauce, couldn't I? Sometimes people, you know, cook meat in, in co- cola, don't they? Yeah, and yeah. cola goes into barbecue sauce sometimes, mm. so I just think that that'd work as a sauce. Yeah, but I've had a better idea. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Poppadom sauce. No one's expecting that, are they? No. It looks like cherry cola, but it tastes of poppadom. I also eat, eat, eat bread sauce is a thing. Yeah, so bread therefore, sauce. why not have poppadom sauce? Yeah.